Hi friends, in this video I'm going to teach you how to get unaddicted to sugar. We're going to talk about which sugar actually makes you addicted and why your body gets inflamed and teach you how to uncouple your energy needs from your sugar cravings. And basically quitting sugar is going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to do because it's so addictive. It's more addictive than cigarettes and you're not going to have to do some fad keto diet or to give yourself injections of diet medicines that potentially can have long-term dangerous side effects. Because you need some form of sugar to live, we have to learn how to eat the right kind to not feed this addiction. And the first thing that we should all do is to learn to eat bitter foods. And this is because you have five innate taste sensation, sweet, sour, salty, unami, and bitter. Sweet things give you energy like fruit. Salty things balances your electrolytes. Unami flavors makes you get protein so that you can grow. Bitter foods are toxic in the wild, so you don't usually like it. And sour foods in nature are usually rancid and poisonous. So your brain is wired to seek sugar, salt, unami flavors to nurture your bodies and it protects you with bitter and sour. And this is why processed drinks and foods with a lot of sugar like soda and chips are addictive. They have a combination of sugar, salt, and many put amino acids like MSG for unami. And this combination sells, it's biochemically addictive. And you're hardwired not to enjoy sour and bitter food. It makes you squint, it can ruin your appetite, and sometimes it can make you gag. You know, you can train yourself into liking or disliking any taste. And on the internet, you're gonna find all different ideas to quit sugar. And there are right ways and wrong ways to quit sugar. You know, these temporary gimmicks that can make you metabolically unhealthy, like a ketogenic diet, make you quit eventually because your body will reject it. But good, healthy, sustainable lifestyle changes can last a lifetime, can increase your health and longevity. If your goal isn't to get healthy, you're really unlikely to succeed in quitting sugar. And you're gonna yo-yo in your sugar addiction, yo-yo your health, as well as your insulin, your weight, and your mood. And this is why you gotta quit sugar the right way. Commercials and factories and restaurants and big business, coffee shops, gas stations, supermarkets, they're gonna sell it. And if you show me a food company that doesn't sell some form of sugar or use sugar in their foods, they're probably go out of business. Sugar sells and every government knows it, so they support the sugar industry. It brings them money. The deck is stacked against you to quit sugar. You're surrounded by it. You know, they put artificial colors and flavors and textures to reinforce the addiction. Parents probably got you addicted and parents are literally working for free for the sugar industry. They're sugar scientists making all different kinds of sugary products in their kitchen, different textures, shapes, happily promoting sugar to future customers, their children. And it's really the one industry that needs no commercials. I mean, we pass it out in churches and schools, we celebrate it. In anniversaries and birthdays, we eat it with every meal, hidden in healthy foods and sauces and drinks and snacks and desserts. And American adults eat 60 pounds of added sugar every year. And that's like six bowling balls worth of sugar. And big business knows how to lure you and your kids to eat their foods because your brain is wired to seek sugar. It's just survival instinct for you. This is because sugar gives you energy. But simple sugars, give you quick energy and complex sugars give you more sustained energy. However, all complex sugars are converted to simple sugars. And the trick is don't eat sugar without fiber around it, which is really eating whole plants that are unprocessed. And these foods are excellent for your health and metabolism. They give you lasting energy and they prevent you from overeating and becoming an addict, addictive eating. And many people hopelessly search for a healthy sugar substitutes. You'll never find it. Nor will you cure addiction by finding a processed chemical that tastes like a sugar. Fake sugars, sugar substitutes, non-nutritive sweeteners, and other processed sugars continue to reinforce that sugar addiction. And this is where it gets complex because there's so many names for processed sugars. The honeybee processes honey. You know, then we have cane sugar, brown sugar, maple syrup, date syrup, brown rice syrup, beet sugar, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, they all sound natural. They're all made from plants. So is morphine and cyanide. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good for you. And to add more confusion, complex carbs like flowers, 
even though they don't taste sweet by themselves, they are converted into simple sugars in your body. Your body will break them down and they will be presented like glucose and fructose. And then on top of that, companies hide salt and fat in it, or you're putting it in your kitchen. Both types of processed carbs together, you know, form donuts, cakes, cinnamon buns, bread, muffins, cereals, or bagels. You got yourself an addictive energy sugar bomb. Start by dampening the sugar reward pathway by pairing bitter and sour foods, like eat a salad before you eat your sugary treats. This can tone down the addictive reward chemicals that sugar triggers. And by activating the aversion pathways in your brain first, you will counteract those high spikes of addictive chemicals like dopamine that your brain secretes to get you to eat more sugar. And eating processed carbohydrates, they all cause the same dopamine high. But when you eat fiber, whether it's in a salad, a fruit bowl, beans, these buffer your absorption of sugar. They build a fiber wall. They avoid those high hormonal spikes like insulin to cause more metabolic havoc and to make you gain weight and get fat and get sluggish. Yes, I did say fruit. Fruit is sweet, but you can eat fruit. They have to be unprocessed though. It can't be fruit juice. It can't be jams or pies. Those are not healthy. Fruit cocktails from a can is not healthy. When you process food, you destroy that fiber. You release the sugar and then you reinforce that addiction because the fiber in its original casing, the hard casing protects your metabolism and those hormonal surges, especially those addictive hormones. And the key is all types of processed carbohydrates will have this positive feedback of addiction. So whether you're eating a donut or a bagel or bread in a sandwich or drinking fruit smoothies or fruit juice, they all get converted into simple sugars. This is why bread, cereals, and crackers are as addictive as juice and candy. Keep your carbs unprocessed. Eat the grains whole if you're gonna eat grains. Don't blend it up, don't flour it, don't add sugar, salt, or unami flavors as this will make anything more addictive. Your body wants the sugar. It needs some form of sugar. And keto advocates are confused. They believe all forms of carbohydrates are bad for your health. And they're lumping processed foods with unprocessed whole foods. That's a bad mistake. Because unprocessed whole foods, they don't just have carbohydrates. They have fiber, which is really non-digestible, and they have micronutrients trapped in all that packaging. This is where a calorie isn't a calorie, and when you eat whole plant fibrous foods, it's not metabolized like the rest of it. Fiber is caloric negative. That means you need more energy to process fiber. By eating fiber, you actually feed your gut microbiome. And when you process it, like you're processing an apple, you're gonna lose that taste and texture, that really that health benefit of the real apple trapped in fiber, where you can slowly release that energy. Apple juice, apple chips, apple bars, apple pies, apple candy, not only do they shove other um, addictive ingredients in, it promotes inflammation, shortens your lifespan, and makes you surge energies. This is also true for milk chocolate. I mean, really, if you like chocolate and wanna get health benefits from chocolate, eat the original cacao bean, because that's where all the benefit is. But when you process a cacao bean and then you add sugar and fat in it, yeah, it's tasty, but you're gonna get addicted. The original cacao bean, if you ate that, you're not gonna get addicted. It's bitter, not sweet at all, super hard. And But once you put more addictive ingredients, fat, salt, sugar, you're gonna just make an addictive bomb of energy. The textures also get you addicted. That's why when we make cakes and donuts, you know, that creamy texture of flour, that's addictive as well. Eat your carbohydrates wrapped in an original structure so that you don't have to Train yourself to get off the addiction. When you eat original food, whole foods, even sweeter foods like bananas and grapes and oranges, it's so hard to get addicted to them. The sugar is trapped inside the fiber. It's also a sour taste like vitamin C. The skin may have a bitter taste like the grape skin. And it activates these pathways that not only make you full, but also prevents these addictions. They don't just come with energy. They come with vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. So fruit is good for a diabetic. Whole fruits are low in calories, they're full of water, they're low in fat, they have a tough fibrous casing to slowly release energy and to feed your gut microbiome. You can't find that in any processed food. And when you process the foods, especially if you're eating high fat foods like dairy and meats, 
that's going to cause insulin resistance. That's going to make you unable to process carbohydrates. So don't confuse the symptoms of diabetes, which is sugar intolerance to the root cause of diabetes, which is insulin resistance from fat, eating too much fat and getting fat from eating too many calories. There's another problem with ketogenic dieters is that they're probably messing with their pancreas so that as soon as they eat any sugar, insulin spikes are high and their blood sugars are elevated as well. So eat your grains whole. They're excellent for your health, unless you're refining them, processing it and adding more addictive ingredients like more sugar, salt, and fat. So corn is great, tortillas are not. Cereals, eat the grains whole. Don't eat um, anything from a box that's been grounded up, floured, and then glued back together. The original food pyramid was a disaster because it taught people how to eat processed food. And now the food pyramid is out and the food plate is in, encouraging people to eat more whole food because whole foods like whole oats lowers your cholesterol, it lowers inflammation, it reduces heart disease, and it doesn't promote addiction unless you're adding sugar or sugar substitutes or salt and fat to your diet. And when you are looking for substitutes of sugar with, with non-nutritive sweeteners, especially with labels that can say it's cancerous, you know you're addicted when you're seeking those things. You are also hardwired to reject sour because in nature sour foods can kill. Have you ever heard of botulism toxin? That's actually classic home canned food poisoning. Oftentimes when food turns rancid, it's sour. And so protectively, your body is innate defense is to reject it. And you don't have a micro lab. You don't know what you're growing. You don't know if it's friend or foe when you ferment things. But when you're pickling food, oftentimes you're adding salt, you're adding sugar, you're making it more addictive. And so this is why yogurts have more sugar than ice cream because it's so sour, it repels you, right? So instead of eating fermented food, add some vinegar to your food. Vinegar is a great way to train your palate to give up sugar. By adding some vinegar to your foods, you can also increase your metabolism and improve your blood sugar control. But don't drink vinegar, it can really damage your food pipe. You may be wondering how long it's gonna to take to train your palate to give up sugar. Well, there are several factors that determine this, and some of it is not related to taste at all, but your emotions. For example, you may not like broccoli because your parents forced you to eat it, which has nothing to do with taste. I know patients who won't eat the foods that they ate during chemotherapy because it gives them bad memories. And you're emotionally eating. If you're overeating, then you need to go get some help. But if you set those emotions aside, it will probably take you a few weeks to train your palate. You'll notice this even within one week. And you can jumpstart this process by eating raw vegetables, keep it whole, eat more fruits, and then adding vinegar to add more sour will help you get off processed carbs. You're gonna notice your taste buds will change, it'll be set. You're gonna need less sugar to give you that pleasure and that reward. With longer periods of not eating it, you're gonna need them less. Fruit will just satisfy your sweet tooth. And if you want other ideas on how to replace sugar, check out my top 10 video.